I'd like to welcome all of our viewers that are viewing us on live stream or on our Facebook page at the Lebanon Church of Christ in Piedmont. And so we welcome you tonight to our study. And all of you that are here in our audience, those of you who are here with us tonight, I'd like to encourage you by telling you that we're going to be talking about things said and things not to say and things to say. Now, somebody said, well, you don't need to tell people what they need to say and what they don't need to say. We're not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow God's Word to help us to understand the principle of those things that are spoken and what the Bible teaches about it. Most all of us could agree that we have probably said some things before that we wish we hadn't said. Anybody ever done that before? I think most of us have. And then sometimes we may be that person that says, I wished I had said this or that, and we just didn't do it, you know. And so what we're going to look at tonight is some scripture that's going to reflect on things that are spoken, things that should be and things that ought not to be. So let's start in the Old Testament as we normally do. It's written there for our learning. I understand that we don't live under that. It's not the covenant under which we live our lives, but it's written there for our learning. And there's a, a great many lessons that can be um, had from the Old Testament and how God dealt with man in a different era of time. Now, we're going to go to the book of Psalms first. And we'll be there for just a short period of time. Then we'll look in Proverbs. And so... We'll move on and probably end up, we're going to look at Matthew in the, in the book of Ephesians and James and probably 1 Peter before we finish tonight. So let's go to the book of Psalms, if you will, chapter 34 and verse number 13. We're going to start over here on our left-hand side. We're going to start with Gary Bragg, if he will, and we'll let Gary read Psalms 34 and verse 13. Now remember, we're talking about things spoken and things that ought to be spoken and ought not to be spoken. Okay, Gary? Uh, Psalm 34 and 13. Yes. Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Okay, that's a pretty, very, very basic, plan, simple verse of Scripture. And think about the thought. Keep thy tongue from evil. What do you suppose that actually refers to? Keep thy tongue from evil. Anybody got any thoughts about that? Language. Yes, language has a, a bearing on it. But also, you know, we can say things sometimes that cut to the core, can't we? We can do it with our tongue sometimes. We can do more harm and more damage with our tongue than, than we could with a, a, a weapon of some sort. The tongue actually is something that the Bible speaks a whole lot about. And he says, don't let that tongue speak evil. And then he goes on to say, and your lips from speaking guile. What do you suppose? And I wonder if we've got a translation, Gary. What does yours say there as far as guile is concerned? Lies. Speaking lies. Okay, I was going to mention that. That word guile is uh, speaking lies. Now, there are people in our society that is habitual liars. Uh, we know that. And when we say habitual liars, that's a habit of lying. And we know what a lie is, don't we? That's an untruth. And there are a great many people in our society that, that don't have a problem telling a lie. And then they, when you tell one lie, what happens? Right, Nancy, and you just about have to tell another lie, and then it won't be long till you tell another lie, and then probably you've got a stack of them about this high propping each other up. And eventually the truth comes out, and what happens to all that stack of lies? Poo! It goes away. Now, that verse is our starting point tonight. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Anybody got a thought or comment before I move to the next one? Deceit. That's a very good thought, Diane. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking deceit. Okay? And that goes back to what Gary's was. Deceit is a lie. You know, that's when you deceive somebody into believing something that's one way when it's another. And that's a very good point. I appreciate that thought. Let's look at another one in uh, Psalms 52 and verse 2. Psalms 52 and verse 2. I'm going to go all the way to the corner in the back with Betty. 
And Psalms 52 and 2. Now listen to this one as we look at 2 and 3. Read, read, verse, read verse 3 and 4, uh, Betty, while you're there. Boy, this is a very descriptive terminology, and I want you to think about this thought. I don't know about you, but it's awful hard to deal with someone who lies to you and someone who's deceitful. Now listen to this of what was just read. Thy tongue devises mischiefs, and he says, and he gives a reference here, he said, like a sharp razor working de deceitfully. Now, how does a razor work? It cuts to the core, doesn't it? A razor can really and truly mess you up. Well, he says, this is our, this is our comparison. He said, the tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. And that goes back to what Diane's translation was talking about in the New King James, deceitfully. You know, thinking one thing when actually it's another, or talking one thing when actually it's another way. And then you see this. He said, Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Now, you know, have y'all ever heard the <laughs> you ever heard the saying that they'd climb a tree and tell a lie before they'd stand on the ground and tell the truth? Anybody ever heard that saying before? Well, there's people out there that, that really and truly that holds true to. Some people just will not tell the truth. And for some reason or another, the Bible says they love evil more than they do good. And there's some people that just can't deal with life unless there's turmoil and deceit and lying and cheating and all that stuff. Some people just can't do that. And they live their life that way. And that's a sad thing. And then we go on with the Bible as he's talking about, Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. I've known people that set and think up words that can harm and hurt they don't really know them they just have to sit and think about it for a while before they can really figure it out you ever known somebody like that there's people out there in our society and they 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 have a, a tendency to work hard at finding a way to hurt someone else finding a way to hurt someone's feelings you know and you know long years ago whenever I was attempting to be a marriage counselor which was a very bad idea you never win in a situation like that. It was always something to me to sit down with two people that are supposed to love each other, are supposed to give in to the, the wants and the needs of each other and to be that nonpartisan person on trying to help each other. And they try to figure out a way to hurt the other. And words, boy, I mean, some of the things that I've heard a wife say to a husband and a husband say to a wife is just unimaginable. And, and, you know, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Devouring means consuming, harmful, hurtful. It, it's, it's a sad thing to, to deal with that, devouring words. Any thoughts or comments before we move to the next one? If not, I'd like for you to stay with me in Psalms, Psalms 59, verse 12, Kimbo, if you will. We'll look at you on this one. Psalms 59, verse 12. You ever been around somebody that just had such a dirty mouth that you just could not hardly stand to be around them? You know, it's a frightening thing and it's a harmful thing to hear somebody use what we, we term the Lord's name in vain. You know, whenever they use those curse words and cuss words and we've, you know, people get mad, they lose their temper, they say these things. And, you know, there is harm and hurt in these things that are said. 
In fact, the Bible says here, the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips let them even be taken in their pride. People ought to have more pride than to allow themselves to be caught up into a situation where it's harmful and hurtful and using those words and using them improperly. And, you know, there's not, not a way to use them properly so that when you use those words, there's just not a word, not, not a way to do it. He says, for cursing and lying which they speak. I think they, they put these on an equal basis. Cursing and lying. <clears throat> and I will share with you something that the Bible teaches. Liars will have no part in heaven. And so, is there something that might keep us out of heaven that most people do and have done? Yes. It's a sin. And lying is, is, is a very, very big problem. And there are people out there that are habitual with that. They cannot tell the truth. They, they lie constantly. And that's a sad thing to think about. So as we look at this, we, we see what the Bible's premise is of, of teaching us words spoken and things spoken. Let's, let's go further. Let's move over, if you will. Let, let's stay one more, one more in Psalms. Then we'll go to Proverbs for just a moment. Psalms 120, verse 1. Pay them up front, if you will. You're exactly right, Zach, and that's a very good thought, very good comment. You know, that, that lying is grouped into some very serious, serious infractions when it comes to God and godliness. All right, Pam, that, that was a good point, Zach. I appreciate you bringing that. Pam? Uh, Psalms 120, verse 1. And verse 2. I think the psalmist, <clears throat> I think the psalmist recognized, and we're talking about David. Most all of us understand who the psalmist is. I want you to think about this for a moment. This is a man who showed his human side. The human side, a lot of times, gets us into trouble. But all of us have one. We got a human side. And in this case, he says, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. In my distress. Well, why would this man... A man after God's own heart, according to the scripture. A man that God had given power to, to conquer a giant named Goliath. A man that God had given opportunity to become king. A man that had the world by the tail. Why would he talk about his distress? And then he goes on, he says, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Does anybody remember the story of, of what happened, you know, with with David, I mean, you know, the lie, you know, it, it's a sad situation. This is a man after God's own heart. Now, is there forgiveness? Yes, there is forgiveness. The blood of Christ, there's not a sin in the world that it can't cleanse. No, that's true. But on the other hand, this man here, he says, Lord, deliver me from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. And that goes back to what my title tonight is, words spoken. Some that needs to be spoken and some that don't need to be spoken. And so this man recognized that. And this is David. This is a man after God's own heart, according to the scripture. Now, let's go over to the book of Proverbs for a little bit. We're going to see something over here. Marilyn, we're going to come back to you, Proverbs 6 and verse 16. I want you to think about, and, and Zach brought this to our uh, attention there in the book of Revelations. Well, let's look at what Proverbs chapter 6, 16, 17, 18, and 19. It's pretty good lengthy reading, Marilyn, but I know you can handle it. Man, there's a mouthful said right here in these passages. When he talks about, <clears throat> and this is, this is Solomon. And, and when you think about how this works, you know, this is, this is supposed to be wisdom. This is wise man. And he said, these six things does God hate. The Lord hates these things. Now, we know God hates sin, right? 
So we, we put these and categorized these in such a way. He said seven are an abomination unto him. Okay? Carries it one step further. And then he goes into this. And Marilyn read these to us specifically so that we could see them. A proud look. Nothing wrong with looking good. Not everybody can. But when you say a proud look, that's somebody that just takes it a little bit too far. Have you ever known people that does that? They take it just, they may think a little bit more of themselves than they ought to. You know, that's, I guess that's the best way I know to put that. A proud look, but he, then he says a lying tongue. And how serious is this? Because he groups it right immediately with hands that shed innocent blood. Man, I'll tell you, hands that shed innocent blood. That's murder, you know. I don't know how it is with, with everybody, but, you know, I have made some statements and have been gotten on to about it before. But I think I don't know what kind of a person it would take to perform an abortion. I don't know what kind of a person it would take. I, I don't want to judge anybody. I'm not the judge. But when you think about how things work with God, when the seed in the woman is fertilized, from the seed of the man. And that baby, there's a soul there. And then that, just in a short period of time, that baby's little heart's just thumping, and then its little hands is formed, and its feet, and its eyes, and its ears, and its nose. And we're talking about a time in life where people want to perform an abortion even up to the point of birth. How in the world could we how could we get to that place in life? I, I just don't know. You know, it, it's far beyond my, my weak mind to, to capitalize on thinking that way. But then we go on further. We're talking about things spoken. He says, and look at this, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. People, some people got a wicked, mean, ugly disposition. And you know what? They can put together and concoct lies that cause problems from day one. And, I'm, and not, a, not a shred of truth to it, but yet they can, they can utilize that. When he talks about imaginations, we all know what that is, don't we? Something not real sometimes. <clears throat> and he carries it a little further. Wicked imaginations and feet that, feet that swift and running to mischief. I've known people, some people that was pretty close to me. They worked harder getting into trouble, then people would have to work staying out of trouble. Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> Nancy, God bless you, me and you. We're in the same boat. We're paddling down that same stream. Some people work harder to get into trouble than others work to get out of trouble. You know, and I don't, I don't understand that, but this is where we're at, things spoken, and that gets people into trouble. A lot of times that gets people into a lot more trouble than they're than they bargain for. A false witness that speaks lies <clears throat> used to be, and I'm not going to name a name because it might go out on the internet and get somebody in trouble, but it used to be that there was a certain lawyer that you could hire. Didn't matter what your situation was. He could find somebody that would dispute the facts. And that somebody was somebody that didn't mind lying. And he could, you could hire him, and he could pretty much, he could pretty much call the shots because he could find a witness somewhere that didn't mind lying. And they'd speak those things. And a lot of times people got off for wrongdoing because somebody came and told a lie to get them out of trouble. Now, that guy's dead and gone now, and, and I, I don't want to mention his name, but, I mean, most people around here, they knew who it was. And you could go find him and say, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fix this. And how they fixed it was with a lie. Speaking a lie, and that's what he's talking about, a false witness that speaks lies. He that soweth discord among the brethren. We might could just mention briefly sowing discord among the brethren. We're here to fellowship one another. The assembly of the saints. And, and by the way, I'm fixing to preach a sermon on the assembly of the saints and how important the assembly of the saints really is. God expected the assembly of the saints. He expected fellowship. He expected a great many things with how the 
the worship halt to, to work. Now, I know that there are situations just like when somebody can't come. They need to be able to worship, and that's good. But the assembly of the saints is still a very, very important part of worship, of being involved with the fellowship of our brethren. Now, let's go further and look at something else. In Proverbs 10, and verse number 11, this is just one verse. Nicole, we're going to come back on your side. Proverbs 10, verse number 11. Mm. we got two scenarios here. First of all, we talk about the mouth of the righteous, somebody that does right, somebody that lives a Christian life, somebody that wants to go to heaven when they die. He says, the mouth of that righteous man is a well of life. You know what that means? It's full of good. It's full of good. It's full of life. But then he brings it home when he says, hey, but the violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. You know, there have been people killed and murdered and bad things happen because of exactly what we're talking about, the mouth of the wicked. Somebody who doesn't care, don't really have any, any hope of, of telling the truth and don't care to tell the truth and cost somebody their life. And that's a, that's a sad, sad situation for people to be in, to where they don't have a regard for for mankind and to the point where they, they allow themselves to get into a situation where they're mouth, they're, they become the mouth of the wicked. You know, it can cause lots of problems. It can even cause someone to have their life taken. You know, any thoughts or comments? Okay, <clears throat> now let's, let's stay with Proverbs for just a moment. Proverbs 12 and verse number 5. Proverbs 12, verse number 5. Nancy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on you on this one. And let's see. Wait a minute now. Uh, let's see. I said 5. I'm looking at 13. Uh, Proverbs 12, verse 13. I'm sorry. I was looking up. Okay. There's, there's a lot to be said here. The wicked is snared by the transgressions of his lips. Do you know how much trouble you can get into with this thing called the mouth? We can all get into a lot of trouble, can't we? And we probably, if we really wanted to be truthful about it, most all of us have had some form of problems in our life because of our mouth. You know, and things said, words spoken, you know. Probably we've been in trouble before because of words spoken. Now, <clears throat> he said, the wicked is snared by the transgressions of, the, of his lips. That transgression is the word in the King James. Transgression, twisted, rested, distorting, whatever way you want to put it. But it all goes back to this business of lying. And that, that becomes a habit that can become very hard to break. You know, when people get attention from lying. That becomes a habit that's hard to break. And, and people carry it further. He said the wicked is snared by the transgressions of his lips. That means that puts a, a noose around their neck. That's exactly what that's talking about. And that's a sad commentary to think about. He said on the other side of that coin though, but the just shall come out of trouble. I've heard this saying, probably y'all have too. The truth will stand when the world's on fire. Anybody ever heard that before? Well, in all honesty, that's the case. Whenever God decides he's going to come and he's going to burn this old world up and he's going to destroy mankind from the face of the earth, the truth will stand. What's the truth? This is the truth. You know, I was reading to, to, to Linda this afternoon. She was helping us out with some of the problems that we're having uh, with some of our people. And uh, we were reading about some of the things that has been discovered over the course of time about the proof of the Bible. And it's amazing the things that's been discovered to prove the actual truth of everything in this Bible. I mean, things you can actually put your hands on, things you can actually view with your eyes and things that 
you can read about that man has discovered that gives all the proof that we ever needed that this is real. This is real. And, you know, it's an amazing thing to look at some of those things. Let's go to Proverbs 13, 3 real quick. Proverbs 13, 3. Let's see. Bobby, can you manage that? Mm. We can actually, when he talks about this, he that keepeth his mouth keeps his life, and he says preserves his life. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it might be best to keep our mouth shut. Anybody ever heard that before? You know, it might be <laughs> I see Nicole and me and you both laughing about that. Sometimes we're better off if we just keep our mouth shut, you know, and sometimes it's hard to do. Are y'all going to admit that? Sometimes it's hard to keep your mouth shut. It's real hard. But I tell you what, there's preservation. You might deter physical abuse by keeping your mouth shut. You might deter even losing your life by keeping your mouth shut. You might deter losing a, a very good friend or something by keeping your mouth shut. There's, there's all kind of defensive mechanism in keeping your mouth shut sometimes. Being careful to put, somebody said to me one time, I think it was my grandfather on my daddy's side. I, I love that old man. Always put your brain in gear <laughs> before you let your mouth start to run. And, you know, he had, a, he had a good thought there. Put your brain in gear. Think about what you're going to say before you say it. And, you know, if you did put your brain in gear, you might not let your mouth run so much. You know, it might be that you have to stop, you know. I'll tell you what, when, you, when you're sitting with a group of people and you're trying to discuss the differences that people have, you know, I, let's just say, and I'm not going to get into this, but let's say politics. If you have one side believes this and one side believes that, and they're talking and they're talking. And those things said sometimes can do. It never solves a problem. Sometimes you're better off. And you do much better solving the problem if you just keep your mouth shut. Being careful to put your brain in gear before you open your, your mouth. Any thoughts, comments? Boy, Zach, <laughs> you come along. <laughs> You come right along with me, even a fish. <laughs> Stay out of trouble if you just keep his mouth shut. And he's right, you know. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. That's a good saying. I'm going to remember that one, Zach. That's a very good, wise saying. Old fish keep himself out of trouble if you just keep his mouth shut. He's right. <laughs> I like that. Uh, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Let's look at one more in this one. Proverbs 15, verse 28. Proverbs 15, verse 28. Let's see. Uh, Michelle, you're back there. The heart of the righteous showeth the virtue, but the mouth of the wicked showeth folly and ruin. Okay. It talks about the heart of the righteous. Studieth to answer. This goes back to what we just got through saying. Start thinking about what you're going to say before you say it. And, you know, having been married to a, a great and wonderful human being for all these many years that I've been married, she'd always tell me, you know, think about what you say before you say it, you know. And if I was going to go somewhere, she'd say, think about what you're going to say before you say it, you know. And in all honesty, it really works. If you really think about it before you go and say it, you know. Now, as she's grown older, it's harder for her, just like me, because, you know, your patience is not near as good as they once was. Your, your ability to manage your, your thoughts and your, your, your uh, vocabulary is not hardly as good as what it once was. It's supposed to be better, y'all. I mean, isn't it? But... Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. As you grow on and, and as things go on, and it's kind of hard. You know, we can all attest to that. You're exactly right. Bobby has a very good point there. I've actually experienced that, having worked a little bit with the police department and things like that. You really have to be careful and manage your thoughts 
really intently before you go and start trying to talk about certain things. You know, because it, it may be like Bobby said, it may take more than just a few minutes to get your thoughts together before you actually ever begin any kind of counsel or any kind of thoughts that you need to put out there. You know, I've learned a lot of times, you know, you may say the wrong thing and you may not have meant to say the wrong thing. It's just like what Bobby's talking about. You may have not have meant to say that just exactly that way, but what happened was you did it. You said it. And it was already said, and you know what you can't do, y'all? Can't take it back. Right, Gary? And, and that makes it very difficult. And sometimes you may not have meant nothing by it, but it was already said, and the harm was already done, and now it's there, and it's hard to deal with. And, and Bible study, that's what it's all about, is, is learning the truth of the matter. Uh, one more, and then we're going to move to the New Testament real quick, because we still got about 20 minutes here. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 18, and verse 8, and verse 21. And we'll come back to this side over here. Diane, we're going to get you on this in Proverbs 18, verse 8, and verse 21. And then, Linda, you be moving to Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Okay, in verse 21. Oh, man, that's a big, big verse to deal with right there, two verses. The words of a tailbearer. Anybody ever known a tailbearer? Somebody that likes to, to cause problems, and they tell tales, and they carry tales, and, and, and they never, ever think about the harm that they're doing. You know, the words of a tailbearer are wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Now, it can harm and hurt deep. You know, it can harm and hurt deep. You know, it can be something that you just can't get over overnight, like Bobby's talking about. It may take more than just a few days here to get over that. The words of a tailbearer. And that's something that I, I think the Bible is very plain on this. If you don't know for sure, you know what the best way to handle that is? Leave it alone. Because you may not mean to, but you may put something out there that's just exactly not right. And that's, that's where we need to be cautious and careful with the things that we do, not to become a tailbearer. You know, I've heard, I mean, people say it all the time. Did you hear so-and-so? And then they carry it on. And then they carry it to the next person. And then that person, what do they do? They say, well, you know what I heard? And then the next person, and then before you know it, the whole town, and everybody's involved in that. It's a sad, sad commentary to think about that. Yep. We've done that before, you know, in lots of situations, you know, where you tell somebody something and then let everybody tell somebody something and, and it don't ever work out hardly ever the same at the end as it did in the beginning. Well, this is uh, where we're going to change and go over. We went to the New Testament. Uh, Matthew 12, verse 34. Linda? Now, Let's go ahead and read verse 35 because that will get us out of trouble. Go ahead and read verse 35. Okay. Now, think about this for just a moment. He says, how can you, being evil, speak good things? I've known people that just absolutely didn't have nothing good to say about nobody or nothing. And they're miserable. And you know what they do to other people? They make them miserable too. And this, this is real. This is, this is Bible. This is what the Bible teaches. A generation of vipers. You know what a viper is, don't you? Everybody know what a viper is? It's a snake. 
And he said, being able to speak good things because out of the abundance of the heart. And, you know, it's hard to imagine the abundance of the heart being to the point where some people have a hard heart. Some people have a real hard heart. And they just can't get beyond that. And they don't have any soft, softness to the heart. And, and they are able to do what, exactly what we're talking about here. It takes a hard heart and an evil and a mean person to allow this to come to pass. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A lot of times it's what's in the heart that gets spoken. But then we looked at what Linda read in verse 35. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Now, let's stay there with verse 36 and 37, Elaine. Let's stay right there and let's go with 36 and 37. And I tell you what, this is a very powerful thought. Words spoken. That's what our subject was tonight and is tonight. Notice how important those things are. Every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. What does idle mean? What's y'all's other translations, those of you who've got the different translations? Does it say idle? Yours says idle. What's yours say, Gary? Says careless. Says what? Careless. Careless, okay. We'll go with that. You think about that. Careless and idle words are going to be there on Judgment Day. So words spoken, are they important? Yes, they're very important. And when I was thinking about a good subject that we could talk about in our Bible study class and people could look at on their Facebook page, I thought you couldn't really get anything any better to help people than to concentrate on things that people say. Because we're living in a society where, my goodness, there's all kind of things being talked about and said on a daily basis that are harmful and hurtful to a lot of people. And these things we will carry with us in judgment because he, he tells us there, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So there's two, two case scenarios, justified words, condemned words. And those things are, that's a, that's a serious matter. That's a very serious matter. And I, I, <clears throat> being the minister here and, and, and being in society and trying to put forth the effort of letting people understand the truth, I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else about being careful. I, I need to be more careful with the things I say because sometimes I'll say, well, you ought to know better than that, and then I'd say something, and it doesn't come out right. And, and you know, if you're going to be friends with somebody who has a, a varying, differing opinion about certain things, and especially the Bible, there has to be some ability to handle your words properly. You'll never set up a Bible study with somebody if you start by criticizing or downplaying or downtrodden everything that they're about before you get started on trying to help them what's right and what's wrong. You all agree with that? You can't get anywhere that way. And, you know, and that, that's not giving in now to error or giving in to things that are false doctrine. No, that's not giving in. It's giving an opportunity to cordially talk about it, to be mindful of it, you know. Let's stay in the New Testament here for the next few minutes. This is coming directly, and you're exactly right, Bobby. This, this brings us to an understanding. You know, these words are coming out of the Lord's mouth. These words are coming to us straight on. And, and that's a, I think a lot of times we, we don't really take it as serious as we ought to about the things that we talk about and how we talk about it, you know. And some people are just mean, and they're ugly, and they can't live without strife and, and turmoil, you know. And they do it with words of mouth, lying, you know, cheating, 
All these things are, this is real. This is what the Bible teaches in this aspect. Now let's, let's look at something else. Let's stay in the New Testament, go to Ephesians 4, verse 25. Ephesians 4, verse 25. Let's see. I think I about got everybody but Alan on this side over here. Maybe not Zach. We'll get Zach here in just a minute. Alan, would you go with Ephesians 4, verse 25? And, and go ahead and read 29, too, while you're there. Now, what Alan just read to us there actually promotes discipline not only on what you say, but it tells you what to say and tells you how to say. And so there, there's a great many things we can say about, first of all, he says, you put away lying. Now, we know what that's all about. And speak every man with his neighbor truth. But then he talks about corrupt communication proceeding out of your mouth. And he said, let all bitterness and... And, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. These things are important. He's telling us, as, I, as Alan read to us there, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What's corrupt communication, y'all? Anybody got any thoughts about that? Corrupt communication. Things that are not true. Things that, are not true. Things that cause problems that wreak havoc. That's corrupt communication. You know, <clears throat> I remember one bad situation that occurred years and years and years ago when I first uh, became a Christian. A man shot another man over a lie. And it was all about something somebody had said concerning the other man's wife. And the man went and shot and killed the man. And found out later there was no truth to it at all. No truth to it at all. And he suffered. I mean, he's dead and gone now. I actually did his funeral. I'm not naming anybody. But I actually did his funeral. But he said to me over and over again, he said, I did a horrifying thing. Took a man's life, you know, over a lie. You know. And, and, and that's, what, that's just what Alan read there. Corrupt communication. You know. Now, of course, he got in trouble and, and, and spent some time in, in jail and all. But, you know, he was a good man. But one lie that was spoken, and it caused somebody to lose their life. And, you know, that's how serious this, this is how serious a matter that this is. We're living in a time where there's no problem finding where lies are coming from and how many lies are being told. We, we don't have a problem with that. We can see it every day, you know. We can see that. But he said, don't let this corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Wouldn't it be great if, if our leaders would... Take a note to this. You know, don't let corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. If it's not true, don't talk about it. Don't tell it. Now, he says in verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking being put away. These are things that really don't have a lot of value when it comes down to talking. What are they? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. These things, they don't have any value much. You know, it's all right to disagree, but do it in such a way that you don't be harmful, that you're not harmful with words spoken, you know, that you have to deal with that for, for months on end. Kind of like what Bobby said, it may take a little time to get everything in perspective before you settle that dispute. It may take a little time. Now, somebody that's got a quick temper and a, and a, and a weak mind Kind of like myself, it's hard sometimes to do that, you know. But that's something we have to learn from God's Word is how to deal with that. Take a little more time to manage that in your life. Uh, let's go, uh, Elaine, let's go to Ephesians 5, verse 4. Let's go to Ephesians 5, verse 4. Bruce, you'll be looking at James 1, 26. Okay. 
filthiness and foolish talk and jesting. They're not convenient. I wonder why he put the word convenient there in the King James Version. Not convenient. Rather than giving of thanks. If it's not convenient, it doesn't have much value, is it? It doesn't have much. There's not, merchant, not much merchantability to something that's not convenient. You know, it's hard to serve it, you know. And, you know, that's another thing that we have to deal with from time to time. You ever been around somebody that was a super, super salesperson and you found out that the way they were super, super selling things was that they wouldn't tell them the truth about it? <laughs> it's kind of like the car, you know, that the old teacher, she just drove it every once in a while. It did have a lot of miles on it, but we turned them back. And, you know, you see what I'm talking about? I mean, this is, this is where it becomes not convenient. It's got a problem. There's problems there. To me, this particular subject is one that really and truly I've thought a lot about. Uh, James 1, verse 26. Okay, Bruce. Hmm. Y'all know how serious that is. That is a very serious matter. A man that seems to be religious and bridleth not his tongue. You all have heard me tell the story down at the store when there was a group of men out in front of the store building down there. And boy, somebody had the floor and they was telling a dirty joke. And Grandpa Murphy was walking up. He always walked up to the store. He lived there close to it. He was walking up to the store, and one of the guys in the group that where well, they were doing all this talking and everything, and this guy was doing all this big talk, he looked around and saw him, and he said, oh, Brother Murphy, excuse me. He said, you know, I didn't mean, and Grandpa said, well, if you don't mind God hearing you say those things, he said, surely don't, me, don't mind me. I'm just a man, you know. And you know, I'd had, I'd, I know that that guy had to feel just about that tall when he said that. If you don't mind God hearing you say those things, then don't worry about me, you know. I'm just a man, you know. And, and really, that's what Bruce just read to us there. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. And come to find out, you know, some people that, that talk some of the worst ways is people that would tell you right first and foremost, well, now, I'm a Christian. You've thought about that? I mean, you shouldn't have to tell somebody, and words sometimes can tell on you if whether or not you want somebody to know that, you know. Now, we all get mad and say and do things and kick and snort, don't we? I mean, we do, don't we, Nancy? We do. Okay. But, you know, in all honesty, we quell those things and we work with those things and we work hard on them, and that's how we deal with it. You know, we understand. Uh in verse number 8 of James chapter 3, the tongue is a, is a very powerful thing, but this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of shorten it up here. Verse number 8, James chapter 3, verse number 8. Now, who hasn't read tonight? Zach, you hadn't read. Uh, let's get you on this one. James 3, verse 8. Oh, man. It's hard to think about that, isn't it? The tongue being full of deadly poison. Let me just say it this way. Anybody ever experienced a word that actually hurt worse than if somebody had punched you in the nose? I know, fam. I've been there too. <laughs> Sometimes a word can be so, so detrimental and harmful if it's spoken improperly or spoken in the wrong way, you just as well somebody had struck you right in the eye and blacked your eye or busted your nose than what they said to you, you know. You might could get over it a little easier. I don't know, you know. I've had my old nose busted before, but, you know, in all honesty, sometimes a word can be more detrimental and harmful than even somebody physically harming or hurting somebody. You know, I've known people before that 
I've known parents that use words sometimes to punish their children with, and that kid would have much rather had a good whooping than what was said to him. Anybody ever? It can be a powerful thing, and it is a powerful thing. And, you know, how we deal with it is going to make all the difference in the world. All right, we've got time for one more verse of Scripture. That's exactly right. That's a very good, that's a very good thing. Verse number 8, we talked about the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. You know, that, that to me sort of puts the icing on the cake when it comes down to words spoken. Deadly poison. We can be good with our words or we can be bad with our words. And the thing spoken, you know, it, ne it needs to be that we monitor that. Not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that you are there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, listen to this, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 10, that's important. For he that will love life, and we do, and see good days, and we want them. He said, let him reframe his tongue from evil, and that his lips speak no guile. So we'll close out right there with that. And hopefully these things have been profitable to us. Uh, it is, for me, a lesson for me as well as it is for everybody else. I'm just as guilty as anybody else sometimes with things that I say and, and shouldn't say. And it's not so much bad words like you would think, but maybe I get upset or something and say something in the wrong way and, and point it in the wrong direction. And that's things that we all need to be careful with and be really, really cautious. Okay, we'll have just a moment here.